All right, I got a minute 45 seconds to get an intro done uh, and a conclusion. We ain't gonna make it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was my goal. <laughs> 10 minutes or less for these things. I ain't going to make it on this one because I got too much I got to say at the beginning here. But we're going to try. Anyway, uh, this is about ramming sand. Uh, it's a basic kind of thing with sand molding, sand casting. And uh, I think it's important to know how to do it. I am going to start this thing off with a with a demonstration that I think is pretty interesting. It actually, it was very uh, it was interesting to me. It was very telling to me uh, as to what happens when you ram sand various ways. So we're going to start off with that. Uh, then we're going to get into a reg uh, we're going to go ahead and mold up a um, a pattern and we're going to pour it and show it off at the end. And I will be back to you. So let's uh, take a look at this demo. For our demonstration here, we're going to take this ordinary looking bucket of sand and we are going to use this ordinary looking cup and we're going to fill it up uh, twice. We're going to fill it up and ram it with the butt end and with the peen and butt end. So on the left side, we've got the butt only side <laughs> and on the right side, we are going to have the peen and butt side. And we're going to go ahead and ram these guys up as identically as I can in terms of pressure. All right, so with both cups full, we're going to go ahead and take our ramming tool. And again, on the left side, I'm just using the butt end. I'm using the broad side of the uh, tool. The, the right side, you can see I'm using the peen end, and I'm actually actually able to get closer uh, to the edges with it, and I'm actually going deeper into the sand with it as well. Now, the butt-only side is, uh, uh, is complete. We've got to finish up ramming with the, uh, the butt side of the uh, ramming tool. Uh, and get that side, get the uh, right side complete as well. So now they're both done. Uh, I'm going to take and mark where the uh, sand level is uh, after both these jobs. And you can see there it is on the butt side. And we got a little bit of compression, a little more compression out of the sand when we did the peanut butt, but not, not significant. You don't see a, a huge difference there. All right, well, here is the moment of truth. We're going to take the sand out of the cup and take a look at it. So turn it upside down, give it a couple of wraps, have it fall down. And there you go. There's the, uh, the butt-only side and the peanut butt side. You can see on the butt-only side, it did not ram nearly as uh, firm at the bottom of the cup. It's got poor definition. There's a lot of gaps. You look at what's happened on the other side, the peanut butt side, a much more consistent ram throughout the entire depth of the mold. So this is kind of what you want to do. You want to be able to ram deep, and you want to be able to ram evenly across your molds. All right, let's get this rammed up. You remember from the vocabulary lesson, it's my drag. This is my pattern. Putting in my, uh, my runner and my spin trap. And parting compound, remember that? Lots of parting compound on here. This is uh, stuff called diamond part. And I don't have a proper, a proper riddle, but I have a sieve, and so I am going to riddle sand onto the surface of my pattern. This just gives you a nice, fine coating of sand over whatever it is your pattern is. Much nicer than if you had clumps, big clumps of sand going in there. You're always going to end up with cracks and crevices if you have big clumps. And I riddle sand across the entire surface just because I like a nice, clean surface <clears throat> on the top of my mold. And we'll go ahead and fill... The entire um, half of the box up here, the drag up, we'll fill it, we'll actually fill it to overflowing. We'll fill it up higher than the top of the, uh, of the uh, drag. And I like to push it down in with my fingers just in the corners and, and around the pattern just to kind of firm things up on the bottom a little bit before I start to ram. I don't want things moving around and that. I believe that helps it from moving around when I start pounding it with the, <laughs> the ramming tool. I have grabbed my old ramming tool. This is one I originally designed before I knew any better. <laughs> and you can see there is a huge difference between the shape of these two tools. The uh, first one was much wider, much larger, uh, and ended up, when you, you'll see when I use it here, ends up pushing the sand in a more lateral direction than I want. Um, and then there's another problem. That lip is always been a problem for me because it dig it goes down below the surface. When you lift it up, it pulls sand out with it. So 
you can see a much a very fairly lateral movement that sand shooting out the sides when I when I do this and now you'll see a little bit of the same on the other one but um, I just um, it's it's pushing it apart it's too wide a tip and then that that ridge as I say it, it just pulls it out we'll see that when I do the coat so this tool has has no lip to grab sand you see there's not nearly as much sand um, squirting out of the sides this is pretty common too. You want to ram around the outside edge first just to kind of again hold things in there uh, and then go back and ram all the air, the entire area of the of um, the dragon or cope depending on what you're ramming here. Get it rammed down in there good and tight with uh, the, the peen end of the sand rammer. I turn it over and I'm going to finish it off here with the blunt end or the butt end of the uh, ramming tool. And this is just to finish packing it, give us a nice uniform pack uh, across the top surface to get ready for striking it off. Now we're all rammed, we're going to go ahead and just start striking it down, get a nice flat surface here. All right, we got everything all cleaned up. We'll go ahead and uh, flip this guy over, flip our drag over, see the pattern rammed up in there, uh, get it cleaned off and get ready to start ramming the cope. Right, we got the cope on, we've got our spin trap on, and uh, we're getting ready to put our sprue in there. Must have had a pesky little piece of sand. And we'll start the process all over again. We'll start with parting compound. We'll riddle some sand onto the surface, covering the whole surface. And then we can just start filling the, filling the cope with uh, handfuls of sand. Okay, I got everything in there loaded. I got it overloaded. I'm pushing down in the corners. I hate when my corners aren't full. <laughs> I always kind of push them down first. All right, another demonstration with the, the old tool. Again, you see the lateral movement. It's pushing sand all over the place, and it's grabbing sand. When, it, when I pull it out, it's, it's pulling sand up out of there. See, it's on the ridge. It's no bueno. No bueno at all. And right, we'll finish ramming it off. And we brought more sand in, filled it to overflowing, and are ramming that all down with the blunt end now. And you can see how much that sand compresses. All right, we're all struck off, ready to go. We're going to pull the pattern. All right, you can see here we got a nice clean mold finish on both the cope and the drag. Pattern re released uh, clean. Had a couple little catches right there and there, but um, for the most part it came out pretty clean. We've got a pretty clean mold here. No, I think it's I think it's a good ram job. Clean up some of the uh, sand that was left behind from where the runner met the uh, uh, the gate, and one tiny little vent. Now you got a nice view of the pouring basin here. I'm getting ready for the pour. Crucible nice down nice and low, close to the uh, mold. Watch that sprue. Did I say full? Yes, it stays full the whole time. All right, we're all cooled off. Let's uh, take a look, see what we get. Yeah, baby, looks good. There you go. Nice, clean part. Not a whole lot of flash on it. We'll get her cleaned up, and I think we can take it out and mount it. There it is, hanging on the wall right next to my wife's tack room. A little close up. I think it came out pretty darn nice. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> I just put my hand in parting compound. <laughs> anyway, that's it. Um, I felt like I talked a billion miles an hour there. And I guess I probably did. I'm just trying to keep these things short and sweet. Um, Hope you liked it. Hope you had a great time. Have a great day. Be safe out there, guys.